Hi there, Scizorin here with another quick video update and this time I'm going to be talking about Bestiary. I've done video about this before. I figured I'd make a new one. We have a lot of new people, etc. So Bestiary is one of the link mechanics that is probably underrated by a lot of new players. And uh, if I type in game here, uh, you have like these, uh, these Bestiary missions. I currently have 69 red ones. Nice. And you, and you get these missions by whenever you kill a map boss. So if I kill a... Uh, palace boss i have a chance of getting one of these before i like talk a little bit more about it i want to start with a uh one of the coolest things you can do with bestiary which you can duplicate six links a lot of people are like ah you know i'm just getting a bunch of unique items etc and like they're mostly shit so i don't care that much about bestiary so i want to make sure that people know that there are cool things you can do so what i'm working on right now is six thinking this Valergalia. it's high item level once I have that six linked, I would be duplicating it. So I want to talk a little bit about how that works and what I do. So after six linking it, I would then also be like getting as many white sockets as possible. That is a combination of the betrayal system with Varishi on research. And I don't really want to go into betrayal now because it's very like complicated. But I'd be uh, I'd be doing that to get the white sockets and then harvest can like help get you more white sockets. It's fairly rare. But let's say that I get this to like four or five white sockets, right? Then pretty much any build I'm going to want to can can use these now the next step here is then finding this beast split an item into two with half of the mods on each item and this is a very big spider it's like if it was on the screen it would be like maybe this big maybe this big like it's a pretty big spider it doesn't work on influenced fractured synthesized or anything like that so i can't influence this and then keep popping out crusader chests but what i can do is then if i split this now what would happen is I would have one six link with maybe Fearless and Gremlin and another with like Jagged, Exuberance and Order, right? It'll just split the mods. So you never do this on like finished crafted items. This is something you do just to get more base types. What I will do then, I will be farming best here a lot and hoping to get split base and I will keep duplicating this. Then once I have that, remember that through Harvest, we can add influence to like, it'll, it'll, like a Blister Lord will say add influence to armor and then when I have a bunch of these, let's say I have six or ten six things with loads of white sockets, then I'll like influence a few of them. I'll make sure I always keep one for future splitting, but I'll influence some of them and um, hopefully hit Crusader, Redeemer, Hunter, whatever it is I want to hit, right? I did this in like actual Harvest League and I think I had like six or seven Virgalias that were like, there were five white sockets I remember. And uh, with one blue, I could use that for pretty much anything. So... That's like Hello. the coolest thing you can do with Bestiary. And let's talk a little bit more about some things that have changed this league. So this league we have here in turns end, we have like the Maven skill points. And the two most important ones for what we're talking about is big game and great migration. You're getting like a large, large amount more um, red beasts. If you get the split beast, there's a 15% chance that you will have two of that split beast. So this is already really, really good. Uh, and 30% chance for the yellow beasts to be red. Here we have Great Migration, which is areas with iron missions have a 5% chance to contain additional packs of beasts instead of other monsters. This ends up with being anywhere from 20 to the most I've seen so far is 42 red beasts uh, in one area. So there's just loads of beasts. And then you start getting really good ones. Now, there are like level requirements. Split Beast doesn't have one. The one I got yesterday was in a tier 2 map. But, for example, the aspect of the spider beast, which we'll talk about later, and the tiger, uh, they are like t tier 10 or 11 and 13. So, you know, when my red ones, I always make sure that I'm running these in tier 13 maps, because that's when you can get all the beasts. And there are a lot of cool ones. So let's, like, let's talk about and look over a lot of the beasts. But I make sure that all my, like, best tier scarabs, everything, I'm running in turns and... And, and before we go too far, if you are a trade league, you can sell these beasts. I'm going to waste one chaos here in the, for the sake of this video. Because so many people, so many people do this. Where they actually go into a menagerie and they're like, hmm, where is this beast? I cannot find it. Is it here or there? There's the beast I want and they will capture this one. You don't have to do that. You don't have to suffer anymore. Scizorin is here to help. Okay, I have to find the name. So then I go look. Uh, the name Fenimal played Arachnin. Fenimal played. Right? Now I have this. Then I have my inventory. Boom. One to sell. Split beast. Seven exalts. Right? You you don't have to suffer. Don't go in here and try to find it. Then you don't have to do that. That probably has a sigh of relief from the audience, hopefully. But either way, 
There's so many other good beasts, so let's talk about a few of the other ones. And generally, you run out of yellow beasts, or at least I do. I'm very lazy with picking up the yellow beasts, and especially now that we're getting so many reds, I'm never going to have enough yellows. I probably have like an insane amount more reds than yellows. So I don't ever do like the ones that are just like, I don't fucking care if I get one more fusing. I don't know how many of this beast I have, but I'm sure as hell not going to waste like 20 odd yellow beasts on getting five fusings. We'll talk about the special ones first. So there are four portal beasts. You have uh, the bird, the crab, the spider, and the tiger. All of these are pretty much always worth doing. Some of the uniques will be worth something, and you also get the uh, the aspects. And they're generally pretty useful. I'd say all of the aspects are very useful uh, for different builds. Avian for minion builds. The uh, spider pretty much for every build. It's like kind of a different, cheaper skitter belt. That's sometimes better. Tiger is very good for softcore. Uh, loads of damage and then the crab is more of a hardcore thing and really good with kind of breaks with glancing blows and stuff so that's really good so all of those four portal beasts are worth doing this one is fairly worth doing as well i normally try to do it on like item level i think it's either item level 85 uh because then you do have a chance of getting uh, skyforth for example which you wouldn't on like low ones technically doing it on item level 40 gives you a slightly higher chance of getting a headhunter but either way you can get cool stuff with that as well these are extremely useful. This is an Exalted Orb and an Orb of Annulment in one. So sometimes you re really want to like your pre prefixes are great. Like you have two great prefixes. You have three shitty suffixes. You really need to get rid of one of them. Then you can use that for like removing one of the suffixes and adding a new prefix. Now do remember you can't use this if you're full. Like if you have three prefixes and three suffixes, this obviously doesn't work. Now a, a really, really good thing about this is it does not remove catalyst quality. Like, if you use a normal annulment or a normal exalted orb, you see here that it removes 20% quality applied by Catalyst. These do not do so, so they're very, very strong. You're always very happy when you have those. These are just divine orbs for rare items, but obviously divining is better in uh, Harvest because there you can get lucky divines. Um, these are very good for when you've finished either an energy shield item or you've finished a weapon. Now, do remember that it corrupts it. This also does not have a chance to break your item. It cannot destroy your item. It will just corrupt it and guarantee 30% quality. A stack of random 10 currency can be worth doing too. You could technically get 10x. People have done it. Uh, maybe 10 mirrors too, but I don't think anyone's done that yet. Either way, fully linked stock to rare. There are two or three other six things as well. I think they are tier 13 plus and they are fairly rare. Uh, but there are a bunch of six things you can get from best theory. Level 1, 21 Corrupted Gem is obviously nice. And 23 Quality Corrupted Gem. This is one of the okay ways to get a Vol Breach, which is sometimes very hard to get. But we can just chuck in like the six thing here for the sake of the video and see if we do get something nice. Most of the time you'll get a staff or a bow or a weapon. But sometimes you do get an armor. But either way, at least this is a divine. Um, so the, here I have an item level 7777 um armor so that's pretty nice and we can talk about like all of these as well so there are some cross leagues these can hit and some that it can't it's a little bit weird but for example you cannot get any breach unique items here like you can't get like the zoff amulet from amulet and the rules are a little bit strange here in fact they don't make sense and have zero consistency so they're hard to explain and hard to understand but you can get a lot of cross league things and you can get a lot of league mechanic ones. So you can get really cool things here from Amulet. I could get a call, or sorry, the Badge of the Brotherhood, right? That's one of the things I could get. Um, I think to the best of my knowledge from Ring, you can get an Astral Projector, which is Metamorph specific. Um, that's actually not a breach item. Some people think it is. Uh, it's not. And you can get, you can get the blight items. So like breath stealer or like the chest, etc. You can get those. And more importantly, from belt, I can get a headhunter. So, you know, if stream RNG is a real thing, this will now be a headhunter. Um, it wasn't. Salt other would have been great as well. Um, so you can get some really, really good things from this. They're definitely worth doing. They're obviously stronger in solo cell phone because then... Uh, even like more common items can be really really hard to get and I will normally like run at least like the belt jewelry amulet ones um, Axe as well is something I'm looking for in soul cell phone because I want a soul taker But um, there are so many good things here And I want to make sure you guys know that so you aren't skipping it because if you're not running a, a, a master mission Whenever you are doing turns and maps, you might as well be running this you're gonna get like a large amount and for most of them, for most of these, there are good options. 
that are gonna like sell for a lot on trade league or can be good on solo cell phone like i've usually i will get at least like a couple of good items per league uh I, already this thing i've had like might of the meek and a couple of other good items so they are worth running obviously the item one here that i'm showing now can drop anything so this could drop a headhunter obviously very unlikely from this one but uh, i do usually run them because you never know and path of exile is all about giving yourself the highest chance to like let these things happen because that's what I do as a streamer, right? A lot of people are like, oh, this is so lucky. But I'm always taking these chances that are small because they can't happen if you don't. Um, so they are worth doing. There's one beast as well that I do not have um, that can also be used in like combination with the split beast. Uh, but it is the imprint beast. And the way the imprint beast works is similar to the old eternal orb in path of exile where it basically makes a save game of an item and it only works on blue items so a good use for this is let's say that i have uh let's say i'm crafting a weapon right a, a exquisite blade and i have the merciless roll i've rolled it with alterations it's merciless and maybe i even have attack speed that's this would be even better so i have tier one attack speed celebration and merciless which is 179 physical damage what I can do now is put my sword in here and then search for like the imprint thing, which I don't have. Um, but it looks like this. Create an imprint. I click it. I craft it. And now I will get like a, a little yellow orb that is my save game. What I can do now is I can regal this item and I'm like, oh my god, I hit flaring. I hit tier one flat physical. I'm so lucky. I have the perfect weapon. And now I don't need my save game anymore. I can keep it as a valued trophy of our time together. Um... But, most likely, oh my god, dude, I hit physical attack damage, leaves his life. I load the item. I load it, I, I right-click the, uh, or left-click? Right-click the uh, imprint, click it back on the blade, and it loads it back. Uh, and I could regal it again. So, technically, that means that in a uh, trade economy where you can buy these, you could just continuously do this until you hit the mod you want. This is obviously really useful because it gives the first step of your item extra safety and then you could finish the rest with harvest crafting so that is like some of the really 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 strong stuff with bestiary so i want to make sure you guys know about that and uh i hope it helps good luck hope you guys are having a great time in ritual so if you like the content thanks for watching try to die less than i do